Hi everyone, Mr. Morgan Lewis here at the school. In this video, I'm gonna go through the principles of improving your speed. Now in general, when it comes to uh, improving your speed as a martial artist, it's the same, it's exactly the same as someone who is into running would try to improve their speed. And that is simply the case of if someone wants to improve at running, they go out, they find the nearest track they can that's nice and long, and they just practice running as fast as they possibly can. It's no different to training martial arts as well. You have to practice your techniques with diligence and speed so that they are effective. Obviously there are exercises and drills that can be performed to help stimulate the muscles in the correct way to allow them to act in a fast manner, but in general, it's more about your technique and how you, and what you want to achieve with it. So for instance, your punches. If you wanted to get faster at your punches, okay, think back to a video that uh, Mr. Tando recently put out, which is to do with using your hip and your shoulder to fire a punching technique out, okay? That applies, all right? So again, we're looking at the principle of if we have our guard up here and we want to try and initiate a fast punch, then it's, it's down to telegraphing, the way we have our guard, the way we put the technique in, okay? So for instance, if your guard is lower down here, of course, before you throw the punch, it has to come up and then go out like this. So if it's down here, you've already added at least a second's worth of time before you can throw the hand out. Otherwise, you find yourself doing this, all right? So you've got to have your guard up first of all. Secondly, it's telegraphing. So when we, when we say telegraphing, what we mean is the giveaways, okay? So it's like someone is going to swing their left hand towards you. Nine times out of 10, what will happen is the arm will swing back, the shoulder will jerk here, and then it will come round. So it's actually quite easy to see, even if it is done fast, yeah? If you're looking for the right movement, you'll be able to spot it from a mile off. Well, to eliminate the telegraphing aspect, then what we need to try and do is send the punch on its direct path, not necessarily change the direction. Now, if we're gonna do hooks and uppercuts, then obviously it's a little bit different because the hook is initiated from the elbow to here and the uppercut is initiated from here. But again, what we're not doing is we're not trying to put on massive swings or massive startups. We're trying to initiate the move from its, its start position and nothing else, okay? So, from here. Just go through straight punches for a second. So if I'm gonna do a jab, what I don't want to do is, I, is necessarily drop my arm here and then, and then send it, okay? I don't wanna pull it back. I wanna send it straight off of here and back in again. But when you practice doing fast punches, you mustn't get into the habit of doing half extended. Because if you need to punch and you practice doing this too much, it will be like that when you need it. You need to practice going at full extension, all right? So you get used to the feeling all right, so you go straight punch, goes out and back in. But then when you're trading off from punch to punch, again, technique, as this comes back, this one should be starting to go. It shouldn't be back, then throwing it. It should be, as it's coming back, boom, that goes out. And then switch, 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 and then that sort of thing, okay? So what you can do as a drill is you can time yourself, say, 10 seconds. See how many punches you can do with your left hand. See how many punches you can do with your right hand in that time. And just, just test yourself. Again, don't let yourself be doing this. And if I'm honest, it would be quite good for you to work with a pad or a wave master because you're gonna feel the resistance, okay? But it's just a couple of little ways of just training that so you get used to, or your muscles get used to the resistance it's feeling. So therefore it can push through a lot faster and harder, all right? Um, if you're gonna do hooks and uppercuts, again, the technique. We, when, we, when we perform our hook technique, we don't do this, okay? We raise the elbow from this point here, but the hand stays close, and we use the pivoting of the front foot to twist us round into this position here. So although the hook doesn't necessarily look like it's doing a massive amount, it's a very surprising move, it's very fast, all right? And at the same time, you are keeping yourself somewhat protected because when this is here, if something was coming towards your body now, you've only got to drop your elbow to, to guard that side of your body. So it's got a number of uses. But what's important at, this, at the moment is the speed and understanding the technique of it, okay? So we've got here, you raise your elbow, and pivot. So try not to pull this back, you know, like this. If you're gonna do it with the rear hand, which is further away, obviously, then same thing. Raise the elbow, twist into it. And when you do the hooks, of course, making sure that you turn your hand completely over as if you're looking at a watch so the alignment of your wrist is correct. Uppercut's the same, okay? If we go like this and then like this, you'll see it coming from a mile off, okay? It needs to obviously drop a bit, but the way we do the uppercut is we do it to try and keep distance. 
Traditionally, an uppercut is done quite close here, which is, you know, a really good tool to have. And, you know, if you can sneak it into different places, then, then it's great. It's a good guard breaker. But in general, the way we, we kind of practice it is we want to try and maintain the distance that we would have with a almost like a jab or a cross. So from here, when we do the uppercut, we, we bend our knees a bit, we drop and twist upwards like this. And as we do it, we send our uppercut forward and back in again. So I'm actually twisting it at this point here, and it's finishing twisting as it goes into the target. So on this one, it'd be here. So again, what we're not doing is we're not dropping here and then going like this, because then you find it going upwards. We want it to go forward a bit. So it's here, here. The way I kind of think of it is if you stick your jab out, or you cross, turn your arm upside down, and bend your elbow, so you have 90 degrees here. And that is pretty much where you want it to be. We don't want it to be fully extended here, of course. We want it to, to be just there. All right, but we're using it to keep distance away. Okay, now in terms of the same thing for your kicking, well, I'm, going to, I'm going to use one kick as an example. So let's say the side kick. Um, obviously, if you have your guard nice and close and you're facing your target and you do your chamber and you pivot correct and you push out and, and down, that's the technique itself. But how do we make that faster? Well, there are, no, there are numerous ways. To not necessarily cheat it as such, but to make your body move in a different way to encourage it to go faster, okay? Don't forget your, your legs are among the heaviest muscles in your, in your body, so training them for speed is a lot harder versus your arms, because obviously they're a lot smaller. Um, so from here, number, number one way you can do this, let's say you wanted to do this with a, uh, with a uh, spin side kick, okay? How do we improve the speed of the spin side kick? Well, apart from going round, chambering, spinning around and getting yourself around as fast as you can you might find yourself a bit struggling to do that maybe a little bit or you don't feel as flexible to do that so one of the ways you can do this is you can put a little switch on the front of it so from here i want to get it so i can spin this way around so what i'm going to do is i'm going to do a switch first and then i'm going to rotate around like this so what i'm actually doing is using my footwork to encourage speed rather than just relying on the kick itself okay so you're in your guard like this, and then it's a quick switch round and boom, and then your side kick comes out. It's the same with a hook kick and a crescent kick as well. It's very fast, so therefore it needs a lot of control. So one more, so you start in the guard, so you switch your legs, and then you notice that my legs are turning and my hips are turning, and then you put that on with the chamber and the pivot for the kick that you're, you're practicing, okay? And uh, another way you can do it is not necessarily with a, a side kick, but let's say a uh, turning kick now. A lot of you would have come across this before, but the half switch. The half switch, remember, is a way of gaining distance on our target without necessarily being noticed. So if my, if my target is in that blue square opposite me, then I want to use the half switch action to bring me closer to the target so they have less time to respond. So this is, I'm going to do this with a turning kick, not a side kick. It doesn't quite work as well with a side kick because of the alignment of the hips. All right, but for a turning kick, okay, when we do this, if I want to get a little bit closer, we half switch. So we bring our back leg and front leg past each other. What they don't do is they don't cross this way. They go this way past each other. So this one goes in front here. This one comes back here. So we have a guard up, we go here, and then there's the chamber for the kick. But of course, if we want to get... If we want to use that to encourage the speed of our kick, then it's all about staying on the balls of the feet, okay? Springing into action and then getting our chamber straight up. Here, straight into the technique so it comes out a lot faster. Obviously you have to practice slow to get used to it, but many of you have done a half switch turning kick before. So what you want to do now is use that to implement your speed. Okay, you, move, you, you can be moving around, working, working in your hands, and then you just explode into a really quick kick. And it's like, whoa, where did that come from? Okay, so there's another way you can do it. Now, while I'm here, just quickly, just to give you a little idea, a couple of drills that you can use to improve the speed of your upper body and your lower body, okay? So for the upper body, quite honestly, there's nothing much better than plyometrics, okay? Plyometrics is the action of explosive movement. So what that does is it encourages the fast twitch muscle fibers in your body to react really, really fast. But it's obviously quite strenuous. So if you're gonna do it for the upper body, I recommend plyometric push-ups, and there are different ways to do it, and you can do it on your knees as well. But for instance, if you're in a press-up position, okay, to start with, you could be on your knees like this, 
and you press and what you do is you just push your hands off the floor like that so the way you're doing is you're getting a nice spring action on the shoulders okay so you can do that to start with to you know get used to the movement you do that anywhere between 10 and 20 times and you know about it okay but it really helps the next stage from that would be to go on your toes of course so same sort of thing but now this time you've got more body weight in your shoulders so it's much more effort to push you up from there like this okay and of course from there you can add other intricate movements such as doing a clap as you come up okay um so from there you, you go down you push and then clap as you come up so that really uh encourages the plyometrics and of course there is advanced levels as well where you actually get your whole body off the floor clap back down again so on and so forth okay but from there this time the legs i personally find one of the best exercises for this is to do a lunge and a switch so from here when you you do a lunge you step forward you make a nice long step but you do a switch whilst you're low now it's quite a lot of stre um, quite strenuous on the quad so you've got to be a, a bit careful in your knees of course but you know so you lunge here okay see my knee my back knee is really close to the floor and what we do is we stay low we switch and then we step through and do the next one so i'll do it a couple of times this way so you go lunge switch lunge switch and that really takes it out of your legs okay so ultimately the principle of speed is to practice whatever movement you want to achieve to be faster you've got to practice it as much as you can there are a couple of uh, ideas for exercises there you can follow ultimately though the principle is making sure your technique is correct all right so take uh, the information there as best you can use it where you need to and uh, let us know you get on in the comments like and share the video and there'll be more fitness or speed and fitness tips in coming videos but for now take care of yourselves and enjoy